That's what fascinates me is the idea of, of the fact that there's, there's a thriving person inside mm. with a whole life of, of rich, rich memories and talents and skills. Yeah. And of course, your mum, you were saying, was a, was a singer. Yeah, my, my mum was, uh, I, I say was, you know, she still is. That's the other thing, you know, you, you tend to, if you're not careful, you start talking about people in the past tense when they're still with us, you know. Absolutely. But my mum was come from a very humble background, proper Ronda Valley, out of school at 14, you know. And But luckily, given the tradition in Wales of singing, there was a lot of that in the community, and somebody spotted her and heard her sing. And uh, like a philanthropist, you know. I think they were uh, related to Marks and Spencers, you know, so I was you know, doing good works amongst the poor. <laughs> it sounds patronising, but you'd take it, wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? It's an opportunity, and it was for her. Absolutely. It opened some doors for her, and she's got the most incredible voice, and she she went and she won um, the Golden Voice of Wales, which is a sort of Eisteddford-type competition, you know, and, and it's kept very much alive there. But it was embarrassing for me as a kid playing football, <laughs> you know, and you'd hear this warbling going on, I just go, what's that? <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I'm immensely proud of her, and quite a few of my mates who would never, ever have listened to anything like that, came to see her. She's a, she's a very, uh, my mum's very bubbly, very optimistic, very open, uh, warm person, you know, and so they all liked her, and, she would do little recitals and they would come, you know, and they'd be like, and they loved it. And quite a few of them got into probably more than I have actually, into, you know, sub opera and classical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So my mum sang up to a certain level and she had a, a good career, very interesting. She toured, you know, we went, where she got Germany quite a bit, and uh, East Germany, wow. actually. So when we were kids, we, we go to Ireland or the Rhondda Valley for our holidays. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> um, but some, once we went to East Germany and we went through Checkpoint Charlie and my dad drove in a Zephyr <laughs> across. But seriously, you know, I, I, hats off to him. Right in the height of the Cold War. And we drove across Holland, Germany, into East Germany, into East Berlin. But anyway, she had a, she had a great career and yeah. she was able to, as I say, do these concerts and recitals even after she stopped. But she became, she's a teacher at our local infant school where I, I went to school. Yeah. And um, it, was a, it was on an estate. It was a nice enough estate, but like any estate, it had some, you know, had some Larry families on it. And still, up until very recently, she'd get kids, <laughs> kids come up and knock on her door and say, thanks for teaching me to read, Mrs. Whiteass. <laughs> <laughs> and she claims that she got as much satisfaction from that as she did from singing. I don't yeah. believe her really, but maybe a bit. Do you think you got a lot from her in terms of, because obviously your talent for voices and acting <coughs> and, and did, you, did she have any of that, do you think? Uh, definitely, I think in my family, very musical family, my dad liked to sing as well. And um, I think also the fact that we moved from the Rhondda to North London when I was a kid, and I, 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 you know, my accent changed. Mm -hmm. So I was, able, and I was, I would flip between the two accents whenever we went back to the Ronda. I could, you know, as, you, <laughs> as I went over the Seven Bridge, I'd start talking the Welsh accent, come back the other way, I'd end up sounding like Alf Garnet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so maybe it's a combination of that. But yeah, but performing and singing does seem to be in, in my family and in. And in and Wales is a culture of singing, as I say. Yeah. But behind the, the cloak of dementia, you know, the mystery, shroud, whatever you want to call it, there's often fascinating stories, you know, of these rich lives, as, as you exactly. say. Exactly. Yeah. It's so interesting, fascinating and horrible all at the same time, watching someone who could remember endless stuff in a different language and she doesn't know, she can't remember me. <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe she'd like to forget me sometimes. But, <laughs> but you know, it is, it's such a cruel trick, isn't it? And so it does, we do have to be aware and patient. And like you say, there's a sort of cloak and shroud of mystery and age and, and difficulty to get through. Don't forget that behind that 
you know, confused mask is a person who, who has lived extraordinary an extraordinary life. Behind that facade, there's anything could have happened, and we don't know, and we very rarely take the time to find out. So, it's you who has to change, and obviously be patient. But she can't be part of a conversation about anything even day to day or you know but what is fascinating is that her partner Mel has got these books that were written um, for people with I mean I don't know how she would describe it memory problems probably you know I wouldn't I would mate I would imagine she doesn't say dementia yeah. but because it's almost again it's like it's one of those words oh all the D word, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's like, but of course. But what these books do are, is fantastic. It's transformative for my mum because I don't know whether it takes her back to the classroom when she was a kid or when she was a teacher, but they're not patronising at all. They're about six, seven chapters, so they're not like, you know, it's not like a picture book. And she, read, she reads to us. So we can sit, so she can be really part of the proceedings in a you know in a in a sort of quite a dominant way you know these are books that are written specifically for yes. people living with dementia yeah, yeah absolutely yeah the they're in the first person okay so it's like an adventure and it'll be a day out or it'll be a walk through a meadow and it'll be an encounter with uh, like a robin or a deer or you know something like that like so it's like a it's an adventure but it's a fairly contained adventure and it's ne never quite clear where home is that home could be a care home. Yeah. But it is very cleverly done. Yeah. Her name is Emma Rose Sparrow. She is one of, a, I think, quite a few now yeah. authors that realise, you know, actually, you know, although they, you know, perhaps can't be part of certain conversations, they can certainly be a, a force in a room. And the fact you know. that's in the first person makes it yes. sound as if she's just talking to you, yes. telling you a story. Exactly, yeah. And you know, sometimes it is funny. I sit there and I drift off. It's like being read to as a kid by my mum. You know, I go, it's nice. It's sort of, and she, cause she's quite slow. So it's slightly soporific. But it's, yeah. it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's lovely, actually. Yeah. Sit there and hear my mum wittering on in a way that she couldn't, yeah. you know, that's without right. the books. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she can read words that you would never think she can... If she can't remember her children or her loved ones, but she can remember, remember how to read synchronised. And you think, how fascinating is that? That those funny little symbols that we are not born with are still in there. And she can't, there's so much she can't remember, but she's... But total recall, so it almost unlocks that. And, you know, like music can. So she's engaged and I can go... Oh, great, I can relax. <laughs> Sorry, Mum, I've been busy. <laughs> my, my Mum certainly, and I, you know, we're very lucky. Like I say, once she knows who I am, she's either a very good actress or she just enjoys my company anyway. She's very affectionate, you know, she's forever kissing your hand and she does it to strangers, you know what I mean? And all love, and she, you know. She's very, very affectionate still, so that... And that's never left her, that. Mm. that, you know. And that's so mm. sweet and endearing. She has always thought that people were great. Because she's so lovely to them. Mm. They pick up on it and they're usually lovely back. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it, really? Yeah. But the reading is, is unbelievable. What it's done is incredible because up until not too long ago, she could play the piano, she could still just about sight read until about three years ago but that has gone so the books have been unbelievable they've been such such a help yeah. for us and, and what it gives her is a role a really positive role you know that must give her an amazing sense of achievement somewhere yeah. you know that she's she's actually you know the, the in the driving seat